He's chasing it. You see it? See it? Oh. You, you don't oh. mess around with the hook. <laughs> That's a good hook set. Well, when you're 125 feet down. And you've got a stout rod. I must say, my rod isn't as stiff as this one. Big, look at this. Big mouth. Come on. Man, you're Ooh. doing yourself, James. <laughs> they're gorgeous fish. And you've hooked them all right in the roof of the mouth, which is great. One more look before we release it. Isn't that a beautiful lake trout? Let's go fishing. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Insect Defend Patch, deep free protection from biting insects. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. John, you are the man. That's the third fish. I want to know what you're putting on there. Are you spitting on your lure? What's up? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of garlic. What was that? Or is it clean living? Oregano. Right here. I want to see what you're using. Now, I've marked fish on bottom, but I haven't gotten them to come up. Um, um, James said that you got to get them to come up and then they hit. Are you lifting them up off the bottom? Yeah, I'm, I'm hanging. Right now, I'm working a swim bait in a wave pattern about 20 to 30 feet off the bottom. Oh, see, I'm on the bottom. You're up about 30 feet? Yeah, I'm okay. trying to get a chase going. I see him. So I see him. Go easy. You probably got a light line. He's head shaking. I'm just going to be gentle here. You, you know, go. that water is sort of, you probably got the thing. You know what? Look it. I've got the Italo gripper. <laughs> the Italo gripper. That's right. <laughs> so what I've done here, I've gently slid my hand in there. You ever tried lipping these? You know what? I have lipped one. <laughs> not a, not a good see? idea. Not a good idea. Now, that, that uh, football jig head, I'm, yeah. I may need to get one from you because I'm finding that my lighter jigs are actually planing away. So that is great. That is a beautiful lake trout. Now, what's the average size of the fish you've been getting out here? That's a little bit on the smaller side than, uh, than we've been getting. We've been getting that seven to nine pound year class. There was a lot of those fish. When we first started to see a lot of naturals in 2005, 2006, those fish are starting to grow up in a hurry now, and we're seeing those nine, eight, nine, ten pound fish, and there's a lot of them out here. This guy's healthy. You can see how chunky he is. Now, I notice no fin clips. Have no they, fin clips. Do they this, normally mark them if they're stocked? Uh, yeah, uh, it would be clipped on one of the fins. This is a natural. Wow. And uh, this fish here is probably about um, seven years old. Man, you're good with your stats. Not bad, eh? You must have fished out here before. No, I got a little thing right inside my Oh, okay, cheat sheet. Okay, I'm going to get him back in, because yep. even though it's mild, and we haven't handled it too much, let's see if we get a wave. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry about that. X mark, you find fish, catch of the day. Travis, Tony Brecknock calling from Canadian Sport Fishing. I need you to think back to the day that you caught the fish, what gave you that big smile, anything you might have used to catch that and land that fish, and go ahead, let me have it. Well, we were in Pickering. Uh, I think it might have been Duffins Creek, and I was with my buddy. We both hooked one at the same time. He uh, reeled his in pretty quick, so he came in to help me, and uh, mine gave me a pretty long fight. I think it was maybe 15 minutes, and uh, he came and landed it for me. And uh, you know what? That was my first trout, and I caught it with a pink trout worm. Very exciting. Closed captioning is brought to you by Arctic Armor. Warm, dry, alive. 
Ice fishermen know that some of the best ice fishing takes place early in the season when there's newly formed ice. The only problem is you can also have very dangerous ice conditions due to thin ice, air holes, pressure cracks where there's open water, and even areas where the ice flows prior came together and froze so the ice thickness is very uneven. Whether you're planning on ice fishing early in the season or later on, it's very important that you use a thermally insulated suit and one that floats, like the Arctic Armor. John, you just gave me that jig head. I just got to my, I just was able to put it on. De <laughs> details, you didn't tell me that I was shellacked. Take your time. This is where I like getting my hands wet. See what that grip? Uh, I'm gonna use my hands. Okay. I'm old school. So am I. I, used to, I ne never used to have a ladle, eh? I used to always use my hands. And then I figured, you know what? If I use a ladle, I don't have to get my hands wet. But the older we get, the more our hands are when we stick them in I the know. water. <laughs> now they hurt even if I don't stick them in the water. <laughs> but it's not, I mean... Not you, that we're old. No, and you don't know really how cold the conditions are unless you get your hands wet, right? So you're doing great. I like the way you're fighting. Fighting the fish. Oh, nice fish head. Easy with those head shakes. I know I don't need to coach you. I just get hyper when they start doing donuts around the hole. They'll all do that. They're... Good size lake trout. You know, yeah, there's a lot of same, guys that are eating. Same year class, eh? Yeah, they're eating their hearts out, eh? Because you're getting one fish after another here. It's nice and easy. And I'll pin them when you get them closer. Did you ever use a gaff? Some guys use gaffs and no, try to never surgically, use a gaff. surgically gaff them. What they do is get them. Because we don't keep any fish. No. So. Come here. I'm yeah, trying to be real gentle same. with them. Just there, underneath the gill plate, not the gill. Hooked very nicely, just in the side. There. Yeah, look at that, nice sleek. They are gorgeous fish. Yeah, they are. I, you can see why they call them gray trout, eh? Especially in Quebec. Beautiful fish. This guy's longer, he's not as thick as the other one. So you're not a fish eater, John? Oh, I am a fish eater, but you know, when you fish every day, you get a lot of fish, and it isn't fair to be taking fish all the time. I'll eat some white fish, take the odd white fish home, because my wife likes those, and I love perch. Yeah, me too, of course. Okay, I'm gonna get him back in. Yeah, nice and easy. Look how slick he is. Sorry if he's gonna get you wet, I'm apologizing beforehand. We call that the wave, you know? <laughs> well done. Fisher girl! Catch a passion! So a lot of kids like to go ice fishing with their parents. Um, now you can't take a normal size fishing rod into an ice eye. You'd be crashing around, breaking your tip, and so on and so forth. So Fisher girl has this nice ice rod combo. Um, it's very nice action, good length, a uh, nice soft handle, keeps your hands warm, and uh, a very nice smooth spinning rail. Yeah. And again, I was looking at it earlier, it's solid glass, so it's really strong. Believe it or not, you could probably land like a 10 pound fish on this. And what I like is the sliding ring, so it doesn't have a reel seat. So if someone wants to reel back a little bit and they want their hand in front, all they do is just move these split rings back or move it forward. So it is a nice outfit, it's got the adjustable drag, and again, it comes filled with the line. So all you gotta do is add your bait or your lure and you can go ice fishing. You know, when you're fishing out here in deep water, not just on Lake Simcoe, but if you're anywhere in northern Canada and you're fishing like 100 feet, right now the three of us, James, John and I, are fishing in 113 feet of water. It's really critical to have electronics, not just to see your lure and see the bottom and where the fish are, but also to navigate. We're probably out about five to seven kilometers from shore. And today we're fortunate because we've got really good light conditions, but you get a snowstorm or low light, it can be really difficult to know where the heck you're going. So what I'm doing here, I've got this Hummingbird Ice 55, and this is the bottom right here. And what I've done is I've got it on the zoom feature. So where this blue line is here to the bottom, I'm zoomed in. So I can see my lure. It's just a light um, Trigger X. I'm using one of those drop dead minnows and I'm shaking it just off the bottom to see if I can interest the lake trout to swimming along the bottom. Every once in a while, I'll drop it down. So it goes right to the bottom and I can see it drop to the bottom on the screen. And also my line goes loose. It's a very good idea. It's a technique I learned from John. 
And if I see anything in between the bottom, and especially where I'm zoomed in, those bottom 30 feet, I'm going to reel my lure up real quick right to where the fish is. And if it's interested, I'll even lift it up a little bit higher. So every once in a while, I am actually going up in the water column, going up about 20, 30 feet off the bottom and shaking it. James, I don't know how to tell you this. You know you got some hooks stuck here, eh? Yeah, you got well, pliers. Yeah. You want me to pull them out? Yeah, after yeah. this fish. Okay. Nice and easy. Yeah. Now, you must be tired of getting all these lake trout. You told me they were gangbusters Gang up here. Gangbuster. You know, we probably landed over 16 yesterday myself. And how we long got... were you fishing? Uh, about four hours. That's just not right. Yeah. <laughs> I was at home doing stuff on the computer. That's just not right, yeah. okay, James? You could have lied and said we got one or two and, you know, it was slow. Now, you like, like my position I'm trying to get ready? Yeah, John's on. got that nice orange grabber thing, eh? I said, I don't want to use it. He's got like these pliers for fish, you oh, know? He's right at the hole. You, oh, 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 easy, easy. Keep the rod up. You yeah, know what to do? Do you have a leader on there? Yeah. It's okay. I got a strong leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, I, I get worried about it going around the ice edge, eh? Yeah. You said you had a bigger one earlier? Oh, boy, did I ever. Okay. Let me do the, pin it to the side here. There. And I'm going to just slide my finger very ah. gently underneath the gill plate. Notice not in the gills. Man, Ooh. they're just inhaling. You said it came up and just ripped at it? Just ripped at it. You can see that jig head. It's uh, it's really swallowed that jig. Look at that. Nice lake trout. Yeah. These are gorgeous fish. This isn't a monster by any means, but I don't think anybody would mind hooking fish like this all day long, like all you day. have been. Yeah, that fish there is probably a solid six and a half pounds. Yeah, good fish. Now, one problem you've had is getting out on the ice, right? Because of the crazy conditions. Oh, we really battled to get out here. Yeah. We got about a foot of slush, a foot of snow. It's just, it's it's treacherous. Well, I'm glad that you took the day off to take us out because we can't walk out this far. Not in our condition, no. you know, when you get my age. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to slide him gently back in. Look at that. What a beautiful sight. We're going to get, we're going to get wet here. Come on, give us it. Oh, I thought we were going to get splashed. You know, for decades, the jigging rapala has been made famous because it's caught so many fish throughout the world ice fishing. Well, there's a new generation of jigging rapala, and it's called a snap wrap, and I'm holding it right here in my hands. And as you can see right off the bat, it's got a flatter top, so it doesn't have a cylindrical shape as the jigging rapala, and it's got a nice flare tail. You see that? Made out of plastic or some kind of material like it. Now, if I just drop it in the water, you can see how nice and bright it is. This is literally like a UV finish, very bright green color. If I give it just a couple of little jerks, you can see that it's got just a kind of a natural swimming action. But watch what happens when I lower it below the ice and I give it a snap. You can see that that lure just darts right across the hole. That's why they call it a snap wrap. See that action? It's like a bait fish gone wild. And that's that action that the fish can't resist, especially big pike and big lake trout. All right, James. Got another one. Look at this. These are... <laughs> Thanks for fighting it out. By the time it takes me to run five minutes up to where you are, you know, you've all pretty well got the fish up bit, top. He's a bit bigger, this one. Okay, just take your time. He's kind of across your yeah, three holes. That. I had to do the same thing. Yeah. You didn't tell me there was a bit of a current here, right? You get him up a little bit, walk the rod tip. I don't want it up my nose. Yeah. You're doing good. Hold on. Well, I got him pinned. I got him pinned. You got him? Yeah. Look at you. Ooh. Nice fish. <laughs> Hooked very nicely. Yeah. So they're hitting hard. You brought him up again? Brought him up. Uh, he ran, I started off with 15 feet off the bottom, got him to commit. This is probably about 55 feet off the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good, good fish. Here. Pop that out for you. Kind of like the guide, you know. Well done. There we go. Thank we'll you. Over there. Thank you. Good fish. Watch those teeth. Man, you are a tough guy. Okay, let's get him back in. Okay. Well done. I'm just running, you know, between you and John. Thanks. Between you and John. I'm not getting the fish much. <laughs> I love all kinds of fishing, but you know what? I love to be in a boat, whether it's on salt water or fresh water, fishing for a variety of fish, because I can move around and I can find new fishing spots. The one thing I've come to appreciate, whether I'm fishing out of a two-stroke or a four-stroke 
powered boat is that you have to maintain those engines in good condition, not just for your safety so you don't get stranded somewhere out when you're away from shore, but also for the environment so that you're not burning too much oil or you're not going to have any leaks out of your engine where you're going to be contaminating the water. And one thing that you can do is actually follow your owner's manual and when you do need to have servicing done on your outboard, take it into an authorized dealer to make sure that not only are they using the right components when they're maintaining the motor, but also to check to make sure that seals, everything is working fine so you don't have any leakages. That way you'll be safe on the water and it's also good for the environment. You know, the whole sport of ice fishing has come a long way in the last 40 years. I look at all these, look at all the accessories that I have. There's a nice uh, rod carrying case with my reels all hooked up. They actually have my lures on there. I've got that nice seat that's also converts into a backpack that if I want to fish away from this portable hut, I can sit on it. I put all my gear in there, you know, even my food and some extra socks and stuff if they get wet. And then probably, you know, the most important thing where huts have gone. You know, in the old days, you'd see huts that were made out of wood and aluminum and all different materials and vinyl of siding and stuff. I look around today, I don't see any permanent huts. And that's because most fishermen have realized that the portable huts, like one of the newer pallet huts that I've got, are so ideal because they protect you. If I just undo these clamps right here on both sides of the hut, and I've got mulligan inside, so I undo one side, I undo the other side, you know, this goes down and it's a perfect enclosure. So if it's cold, I can have that all the way down. I can put my heater on inside and I'm really comfortable. What I like about these huts is that they don't weigh much and I'll show you how comfortable the seat are. I've got Mulligan behind me, by the way, because she was getting cool. You're a good dog, Mulligan. Look at, there's even room for your dog. There's Mulligan. So you can see it's got a very nice, comfortable seat, even though this is the one man. Literally two people can fish here. It's got a nice, finished little tabletop if you want to put your lures here or your sunglasses. And it has a hard bottom. The other nice thing that's uh, really nice about these huts, they come with these runners that are made like out of nylon, and the runners are actually connected underneath. So it makes pulling the hut, whether it's by hand or whether you're uh, towing it behind a vehicle, very easy. And if you are pulling a hut with a machine, you have to have a proper tow bar. So it's ideal, very lightweight, very portable, keeps the elements out. And a day like today, really, you don't have to have it closed. We've had it open all day because it's close to zero. But what it does is it allows you to fish in comfort, be mobile, and that way you can spend more time concentrating on catching fish. You know, this is amazing. It's the middle of the day. The one nice thing about lake trout fishing, and what John said earlier, is that they actually turn on again midday. So we started early, and uh, we started early. I mean, we met at about eight o'clock, came out on the ice, and uh, it was tough going, so it took us a while to get out here. We probably start fishing around 10. It's a nice lake trout, big head. Come here, see if I can get his head turned around. Oh, big head shakes, keep that hook in your mouth. You know, it's nice when you get a little bit of snow off around the ice hole because you can actually watch the fish shake and fight and so on. He's not hooked deep. Come on, come on, he's trying to get his head up. Come on, nice and easy, big head shakes. I can see that trigger X sticking out of his mouth. I saw that fish come right up from down below. Come on, there. It's not a monster. Oh, come on. You know, sometimes if you don't keep the pressure on these fish, they just thrash so wildly that they get off. Okay, so this is about the size of the one that James caught. Beautiful lake trout. You can see he's hooked lightly just through the roof of the mouth. You can see he's missing one of those pelvic fins. So this is, because it's the size of James, I'm suspect that it's the same year class. So you can see it's a very healthy lake trout. You know, if you were fishing some of the northern lakes, and I don't mean really far north, but around Minden, Halliburton, this would be a trophy because a lot of those natural reproduction lake trout grow very slow. And so this fish would actually be big. So I'm just gonna get that trigger X out of its mouth. It hit it nice broadside. It's so nice when you see those fish actually come up for the bait. There, okay, one more look before I slide him back in the water. Not a trophy by any means, but you know what? Just a gorgeous fish. 
What an unbelievable day here on Lake Simcoe. And you can get these all winter long. The only thing is you have to have safe ice conditions when you come out here, because we're in deep water, so we're a little bit offshore. Okay, I'm just gonna get them in. And beautiful. Look at, no problem. Great release. Now, what I've been using here is this new, it's called a dead drop minnow and it's by Trigger X. They've got the package right here. These were designed primarily by bass fishermen and most of them are used with just a large worm hook. And if I put the package down, you can see here that there's an opening underneath because the hook is actually designed to go through there and either to stick a little bit through the top or to be rigged Texas rig. And a lot of times they're fished without any additional weight. But you know what? You can use them very effectively for ice fishing as well. But you know what? You can rig them very well with the weight just like I have here and thanks to John, on, I've got that football jig head on there, which is ideal for fishing that deeper water when you're over 100 feet. You can see it's got that nice tail action that goes from side to side. And you know what? It's about just the size of a mature smelt, about four or five inches long. And I like that color, even though chartreuse has really been working well for the guys. You know, if you come out here for lake trout, you can fish traditionally with tip-ups and you can use live minnows. But you know what? This is a lot easier. And when you hear people like John saying that on some days he's caught 40 to 60 lake trout, you wonder if you really need bait, like real bait, because some of these soft plastics actually work better than real bait. Now, James, you're going a little slower on this fish. Why is that? Well, this fish is, <laughs> this could go over 15. It's got a lot of shoulders. Now, how many fish have you caught? How many Lakers through the ice this season? This season, way over 100. Wow. It's been a, f a fantastic year, Lake Simcoe. Okay, so you've the got the neck. You know how heavy they are. Oh, he is a good fish. I saw him. Yeah. Oh, I, got, I can see you're excited, James. Oh. Easy. You might not be hooked that great. Just gentle. It's the last part where fishermen lose their fish. You know yeah. that, eh? So just be gentle. He's got to give up to get his head up here. Okay, we got him. Oh, uh, we do got him. We do got him. We do got him. Woo! Can you believe I did that? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say he's 15. I'm going to stand up here. Yeah, oh. Well, he's over 10. Yeah, he, that is a nice lake trout. Yeah. I must say so myself. Good size fish. There's the grub just to get out of the way so we don't get hooked. Look at that. Right here from Lake Simcoe with master guide fisherman, tournament fisherman, dogfish master, James right. Beaupre. <laughs> Look at, you can, you can take a bow, you know, like a curtsy. Yeah, there's another lake trout. So I'm telling you, I'm having more fun here, getting cold and running back and forth. <laughs> John's like, got one on, oh, off. He said, I got one on, we'll start running up, got off. This is great, getting these big fish and it's not too cold. Oh, I'm telling you, even though he's over 10, I swore he, he boy, Fought he like put a up a good fish. fight. Okay, Healthy you know what? Fish. We're gonna get him back in the water. Are we gonna get splashed? That's a question. Usually when they taste that water, you know what? This guy's gonna be quieter. Beautiful, Ooh. nice release. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you by Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line. Yamaha, Conquer Outdoors. Insect Defend Patch, deep free protection from biting insects. Dickies. Quality workwear since 1922. You know, this is a really nice Rapala fishing outfit. You can see that it's nice and short. It's got a nice flex to it. And it's equipped with that shift reel that's actually been made for ice fishing. What I like about it is that it's got a nice deep spool. And I've actually got it loaded with the suffix Ice Magic. It's the braided line. It's actually the ice braid. So it's the 832. And it's perfect because you can feel everything. I've got a plastic grub on there now, so I'm using my spinning outfit. If I was using a hard lure, I'd be using my bait caster. Right now I've got a fish on screen, so I'm gonna to try to talk and chink at the same time. It'd be lovely if this lake trout would hit, and it's looking at my bait. I'm lifting it up, come on. Come on, lake trout. You know, this, using the high-tech rods and reels, using the electronics is so exciting because you see the fish and the way they respond to your lure. So this could be a white fish because it's not hitting, so I'm gonna lower it down. Check into these Rapala outfits because they're amazing. 